Welcome back to Oakhaven. So we are at the beginning of a project where we are doing some uh, native landscaping out at the end of our road. And uh, part of that is bringing in other plants to, to plant out there. In the woodlands, uh, we're mostly just encouraging the plants that are there to grow, getting rid of the invasive species and such so that the native plants that are already there have a chance to expand and thrive. Um, in this plant, uh, planting that we're talking about doing uh, down at the end of the road, we're bringing in some other things, some things that uh, um, we think will be a benefit to the um, environment around here, the ecology, the, the plants and the animals and the things that live here. Maybe things that aren't found on our property, but we're still interested in finding things that are native and found within the, the, a very close geographic area. Uh, what people consider native is uh, wide ranging. Some people say, oh, this is found in the United States. So here this species of uh, milkweed that grows in California is a native plant for us in Ohio. I don't quite look at it that way because to me, native plant means something that has um, evolved, been created to, uh, to function well with the, uh, the plants and animals and the ecosystem that's right here. So my, I'm concerned with it being a fairly tight geographic area. I'm uncomfortable with bringing things in from, so we're in Ohio, so from, uh, that grow along the shores of Lake, uh, Lake Erie or over towards Lake Michigan. And, um, you know, that's geographically closer, but it's still, it's a different, it's a different environment. The, the plants and animals, the insects that I want to encourage are the ones that are native to the Cincinnati area, this, uh, this, uh, Southwest Ohio area. So that's what I'm mostly uh, focusing on. Uh, because of that, when I think about plants that I want to add, so like we have some milkweed here, we wanted to add milkweed. Milkweed is a, you know, obviously it's an important part of the life cycle of monarch butterflies. So we wanted to have some milkweeds there. But I didn't want to buy milkweed seeds that were produced in Maine or, you know, Colorado or something like that. I wanted to find milkweed seeds that were, were growing locally and were an ecotype that was geared towards this area here and that would thrive in this area. Plus, I'm just naturally cheap, so it's easy for me to go out and I'll collect seeds that are, are free and along the roadsides that are, are uh, benefiting uh, the ecology rather than shelling out a lot of money and buying in seeds from other places. So all that is a long introduction to what we're doing with some of these seeds. So I have a, a package here of some um, common milkweed seeds. These are the whole pods uh, that we decided we wanted milkweeds in our, our native area here. So we went out and, to, and looked for them. Harder to do than I realized. It was a lot harder to find milkweeds growing native in the wild places along the roads. You know, I've been hearing that for years that milkweeds populations have been plummeting and it, along with that, the, the monarch populations have been plummeting. I guess I didn't really, really appreciate that until I went out looking for um, milkweed pods that I could, I could plant the seeds of. So we did find some, so I've got some here, so we're gonna plant them up. Uh, the, the technique that we're gonna do, a lot of native plants, they need to be stratified. They need to, to be, have a period of cold treatment before they will sprout. You can imagine that if a, if a tree or a plant produces seeds and it drops on the ground and there's nothing to keep it uh, dormant for a period of time, it, on the first warm day it will turn and sprout and then the next day it may freeze. So um, plants are well designed so that they will, they need a period of cold before they will um, sprout out in the spring. So um, most plants have different varieties of what they need for that type of, of stratification, whether they need to have just cold weather, whether they need to be um, like physically or mechanically um, damaged in some way that allows the water to get into the seed coat. Uh, there's a lot of information and I would encourage you, whatever plants you're talking about starting, look into the specific requirements for those plants. So what we're talking about here is um, milkweed. So what we're going to do is we're going to plant some right now. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's December 16th. So we're, we're at the beginning of, of winter here. We're going to plant them up in uh, these milk jugs, uh, which we're going to seal up and they're going to form like little uh, greenhouses that we're going to plant them outside so that they will go through the freezing and thawing that uh, these seeds would normally go through if they were out in the wild. Um, and then in the spring, hopefully they, they will have broken their dormancy and will um, sprout out and then we can plant them where we want them to be. 
So the medium that we're going to put into the bottom of our milk jugs to, to grow these plants, um, again, because of just the nature of my cheapness, we have lots of old potting soil that is mostly, it looks like sphagnum, and there's some perlite in there, and some vermiculite in there, and some different um, um, non-soil um, potting medias, but there's also some, some dirt in there, just some regular soil in there. This is probably a little bit coarse for what we would want to do for starting seeds. So I did go through and I sieved some of this, took out the bigger chunks, and got a finer um, soil for the seeds. Here, I ran it through this sieve here, <clears throat> um, which worked out pretty well. The, um, anytime, if, if you've done any work with potting soil before, you realize that when potting soil is dry, it is almost impossible to wet. So it, it becomes... Um, hydrophobic or a fear of water and you add water to this and it just runs off so to get it to work you really can't work with it dry plant your seeds and then try to pour water onto it and it, it would just beat up and, and fall off so what you need to do is you need to add the water to it and mix it up so that you have moisture in it once it has moisture in it it will then readily absorb more moisture but you can see the difference between the dry soil and some that I've added a little bit of moisture to it. That's the same stuff. I've just given this some time to, for the, the, um, the water to absorb into the, the, um, the organic material. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this into some milk jugs. What I've done is I've taken this first milk jug and I took a, uh, just a utility knife and I sliced around the outside of it. I left an area right here on the flat side where the handle is that will form kind of a, a hinge there and I'm going to add two or three inches of potting soil or we'll call this seed starting soil you could do this with new soil obviously if you buy it new it's going to be sterilized it would be an ideal situation if this was sterilized because it has been sitting around so that may have other weeds in it that's going to be a problem in the spring that we're going to look and there will be things that will be sprouting and if we don't know what milkweed seeds look like, we may be wondering, oh, is this milkweed or is this something else that's a weed that's growing in there? If you start with a sterile mixture, you've, you've answered that question for you because you know that what's growing up is, uh, is what you're trying to get to grow up. So I'm going to put enough in here, two things, enough for roots, but also enough so that it's weighted down. Again, we're going to have this sitting out all winter, and these soilless mixtures tend to be pretty light. We don't want it to, um, to be blowing away. So I've got maybe two or three inches of, of soil in there. It'll come on over here. Seed pods of milkweed are just beautiful. <laughs> you look at this, and you look at the way these seeds are, and it looks like, you know, a, a pheasant's feathers or um, bird feathers or something. It, it's really incredible. So we're just looking for some of those seeds there. We don't actually need the, all the fluff on it. So I'm going to just sprinkle this around. I'm going to do this pretty heavily. A lot of people would do it, you know, four or five plants per container. Um, to be honest, I'm going to move them into something else later on, so I really am just interested in it, how it, um, giving it this, this cold treatment. Okay. There, put that in there. Okay, I'll try to spread that out, out a little bit. And now I'm going to take it over and add just enough soil over the top. I saw one thing that recommended using a sand over the top rather than putting soil over the top which would weight it down a little bit um, 
seems like a good idea. This is just how we're choosing to do it. Okay, so there we've got that. <coughs> and I have got, I am planting my milkweeds all over the place. Milkweed, you know, it, there's a big push for, for milkweed right now because everybody likes the idea that it, uh, um, it's, it's so important in the monarch's uh, life cycle. Milkweed is a pretty weedy plant. Um, you know, farmers 50 years ago hated milkweed, which is probably one of the reasons why you get, um, why you don't have a lot of um, milkweed around. But, you know, it was viewed as, as a weedy thing. You know, it just grows up in your, your weedy areas and along your ditches and such. Um, but, you know, that's what happens when we try to make personal judgment calls on what's important and what, what do we, what, what's good to have and what's bad to have. We may realize that, ah, I, may, I didn't like this part of it, but I liked having the, the monarchs around. So, okay, so I'm going to take this duct tape now, and I'm going to seal off this... jug easier said than done it's cold out here I did want to mention that <clears throat> I, I have learned um, when I tried taping these up in the cold it's not as cold today but it's still not taping pretty well uh, when I bring this inside uh, it tapes much easier. So I'm going to bring these inside, let the bottles warm up and the tape warm up a little bit. Uh, I'll tape them and then bring them back outside and uh, set them next to the foundation. Okay, not very pretty, but serves its purpose. We don't really want the top on it because we want it to have some airflow through here, but that will hold the moisture in. Um, we'll allow the, uh, the, the soil and the seeds to be exposed to the weather. Now I'm gonna mark this. So I'm going to mark this two ways. I'm going to mark this with the easiest way, which is just to grab a Sharpie and write it on the outside. But experience seems to say that people who have done this before and written with a Sharpie on a <clears throat> milk jug and then left it all winter, um, you end up with a, a jug that has no label on it because this just doesn't last. So we have another tip here. Um, this is a, a, um, a paint pen, so it's an oil-based paint pen. Um, that's supposed to be a better option for this. So we're going to do both, and then we will look at it and see see which one works best. I'm labeling this with the common name. In this point, at <clears throat> this point, I'm calling it common milkweed because I also hope that we're going to do some um, some butterfly weed, which is another milkweed. Um, I'm not going to put the scientific name on here. I'm going to put the date. So today is the 16th, 16th, 15th, 16th, 2022. And then I'm going to put down the year or the time it was collected. So collected on the 17th of November. And where I collected it. Okay, so now I've got that labeled, ready to go. We're going to do the same thing with a whole pile of, of seeds that we've collected. And then we're going to, to set this aside kind of along the base of the house where it can absorb some heat and uh, sunlight, um, and be protected from the wind and be protected from any other critters that might be uh, climbing into it. Cayenne has been helping me um, finish off all of these seeds so uh, I guess she's done or he's done now so um, but I wanted to explain some of the other things that we did so we finished the milkweed and I also went through and put holes in the bottom for drainage we want to make sure that it doesn't get too soaked it's not going to get a lot of water um, in through this little hole hopefully it'll hold enough water in we'll have to keep checking this uh, during the, the uh, winter to make sure that it's not drying out that it continues to have water and more so in the spring particularly after it after it germinates um, but we want to make sure that it's moist um, during the winter and then it has moisture um, when it uh, when it germinates so there's the milkweed already done we also have done some other ones that we were interested in trying um, again everything has different 
uh, requirements for stratification. So um, if you have a specific plant that you're interested in, I would look up what the stratification needs are um, for that specific plant. Milkweed, I think it just needs a cold treatment for, I've seen everywhere from 30 to 60 days. Um, it should be fine what we're doing at this point. Um, we also picked up some seeds of bladder nut, American bladder nut. Again, it's a, um, <clears throat> a low shrub that, uh, that should be good under the power lines. It won't get too tall, but it's a native uh, shrub. We have some persimmons here. Um, we have one persimmon tree that I know of on the property. It's a uh, male, so it doesn't produce fruit, but we have one in uh, the neighborhood that does produce fruit. Um, so we have some persimmon seeds from there. Um, I wouldn't mind getting some persimmons growing. Not the best thing for underneath the power lines because it does grow very tall, but I just would love to have some persimmons. Um, shorter things, um, we planted up some pawpaw. We've got a fair amount of pawpaw already on the property. Um, ideally, it would be nice to get some genetic diversity in our pawpaws. Um, you get much more fruit if you get a variety of, uh, of uh, different, different pawpaw plants and different, uh, different uh, genetics. Um, uh, we also have dogwood here. We've got a fair number of dogwoods on the property, but I would love to have more dogwood um, growing along in the, the front of the property there where it's more visible. Um, it's a great small tree that's small enough that uh, it will grow underneath the power lines. Um, Flowering dogwood has great white flowers in the uh, in the spring, um, and then in the fall it really has pretty good uh, reddish color on the leaves too. So, uh, dogwood. Looking forward to seeing what goes on with that. We also picked up some um, staghorn sumac um, fruit that uh, we have not planted yet, but we will do in a little bit here. Um, sumac has great great uh, fall color, um, very deep red, and uh, these wonderful. Um, berries through the winter, um, so it, it's like a great Christmas plant here, but it produces um, fruit and it's a, it's, it's a good native plant um, that should grow easily. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of a weedy thing that grows along waste, waste places, so um, we're hoping to get some of that growing along here too. So anyway, that's what we're doing. We also have, we've got more plants and we will continue to, to collect plants as we uh, collect seeds and plant more um, uh, milk jugs as we find them through the winter, I'm sure, just because once I get started on this, it just seems like a really cool idea and we'll probably do more. So we'll do another video in the spring to, to kind of show how this all worked. Um, but we're excited about how this is going and uh, you get a kind of an idea of what we're thinking about for choosing plants for down by the, the road. So there we go. Thanks for coming.